read uh, Psalm 23 um, talks about the shepherd and uh, what's it? Uh, the shepherd leads, right? Um, and um, he leads beside still waters. He leads in parts of righteousness and uh, talks about the shepherd leading, guiding, um, nurturing, and so on. So let's let's just read this and pray. Right. The the Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, uh, what really caught my attention was uh, the fact that the shepherd leads, and uh, it, we are, of course, as the sheep, we are, we are the ones who follow, and uh, he leads in different settings. Right, um, we see the environment changing, uh, but he is there leading, and uh, because he is leading and because of his presence, the psalmist experiences, um, you know, comfort, and the psalmist experiences uh, courage, um, and then he makes that declaration: surely goodness and mercy. Um, shall follow me. Even as the psalmist follows the leading of the shepherd, there's something else that is following the psalmist, following the shepherd. Right? Talks about goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Uh, so maybe so. May may this be our experience as well as we follow the leading of uh, the good shepherd. Right? Let's pray. Father, we, we thank you that you are our shepherd. We thank you that you, you have uniquely designed us, each one of us, God. And, uh, and what a privilege it is, Lord, that you've designed us to hear your voice. In a way to hear your voice, Father God, we thank you. And we thank you that our spirits have been quickened to, uh, to receive, Lord, uh, your uh, leading. We have been, uh, our spirits have been made alive to... Uh, to have been, Lord, you brought us to a place of relationship with you. You call us your sons and daughters, and and your word declares that they that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And uh, we thank you for this privilege that you've given us. We thank you for this, uh, God, uh, ability that you've given us to, to keep up and to follow the leading uh, of the Good Shepherd. Lord, we thank you that you're the shepherd was come to lay down, um, you lay down your life. And Lord, we thank you that uh, it is to protect us, it is to save us, Lord, it is to bring us out of darkness into light. We thank you for the redemption. We thank you for all that you've done, Lord. And even as you lead us, Lord, we pray that, um, Lord, for some of us who need um, to rest by the uh, by the still waters, Lord, I pray that they rest and refreshing. Lord, for some of us who need the nourishment of green pastures, Lord, I pray that they will, uh, we will experience that. And uh, Lord, those who need to, Lord, uh, be prompted and not back to paths of righteousness, Lord, I pray Lord, and that happens well. And Father, I just pray for an impartation, for an infusion of courage that we can declare, I will fear no evil. Because you are with us, even in the leading, Lord, you are with us, Lord, your presence is with us. And, Lord, we can boldly declare, Lord, that in the presence of the enemies, oh God, you prepare a table, Lord, you uh, on you put us on display, Father God, and uh, display, oh God, your goodness, your grace, your favor upon us, God. Thank you. We thank you, Lord, even as you lead us, Lord, all this is just unfolding in our lives, God. And, Master, we thank you that uh, that uh, Lord, that because of your presence, Father God, 
Now we are comforted because of your presence. There is courage and strength. And uh, yes, we can surely declare, boldly declare, joyfully declare, God, that surely goodness and mercy will follow us, even as we follow you, the one who is good. We thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for this time, for these sessions, Lord. We pray that you'll continue to lead us, Lord, and teach us um, to be good leaders. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, um, welcome back, those who joined uh, uh, yeah, during the prayer time. Um, just wanted to um, yeah, uh, continue from where I left off. Just a minute, I'm just closing a few things here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's been a month, so the Samson's hair has grown back. <laughs> so, strength. <laughs> yeah. Um, So uh, today, you know, as we as we come from where we left off, um, we are going to look at um, you know uh, one aspect of uh, leadership, which is uh, you know leading through change. You know, uh, the first section is actually leading through time, right? And with time, um, there is there there are these ups and downs. There are these different seasons, and uh, and so uh, today uh, we are looking at uh, leading through um, you know some changes. Or um, specifically, we are looking at leading through transitions, right? Um, transition, the, the dictionary would say that it is a process uh, of, or a period uh, of changing from one state or one condition to another. Okay, let me just put it here. The process of period of changing from one state or condition um, to another. So transition, right? So, uh, from one season to another, from from one you know uh, condition to another. So that's a transition. So, um, so how does one lead through uh, you know transitions? You know, and I, I understand that um, you know in a class like this, some of us could be um, just uh, you know just starting out and you know getting ready to lead, and you know have been seasoned leaders in some capacity or other, maybe. Maybe a life group, maybe a, a Bible study, maybe a church, um, you know, um, and and so on. So, you know, you've been leaders for many years, um, and so you know we have a mixed, you know, crowd when it comes to experience of lead um, and uh, formal leadership. I'm talking about, but uh, uh, but this uh, aspect of leadership transitions, you know, so. It it may resonate with you in the sense that you may think, okay, I've gone through this, um, but for some of us, it might be uh, something where they're saying, okay, uh, this is not something that I've gone through, but it'll be you know good learning as well. So uh, so let's, uh, let's take a look. Let me just share the notes, and um, we'll take a look at that. Okay, it's uh, so we we see that. Uh, you know, a classic example that we see in the in the Bible is that uh, when it comes to transition or leadership change, um, is in the book of Joshua. Right? We um, we see Joshua taking over the mantle of leadership um, from Moses, and right? so we see uh, a big change. That's one can just imagine. What is what is going on in Joshua's mind, um, in uh, you know, in his heart? Uh, because the leader who was there was, you know, really uh, bigger than life itself. Right? Um, very charismatic. Very. Um, uh, you know, he was been there. He had history, and uh, somewhat like a legend, right? Um, so, uh, and and Joshua has been, you know, there accompanying. Being with the leader for you know for all these years, and there comes this time when the leader is not there. Right? Um, well, he has he received much from uh, from Moses, uh, and uh, you know he has learned a lot. He has seen Moses uh, right when people were grumbling and all those difficult times. He's seen Moses, uh, you know, when he was uh, in the tabernacle and he would come out, and uh, Joshua would stay back. Right, and we see that, and uh, and he, he's seen in you know all those uh, 
the weird experiences, the, the supernatural work, he's seen that. And now we see that Moses is no more. Okay, and uh, now Joshua is uh, faced with this awesome responsibility of um, uh, of carrying on this mantle, of stepping into the shoes uh, of leadership. Right. So, uh, so you see, uh, you know, this is what uh, in the conversation that Joshua has with with God, um, and uh, it's very very interesting. Right. Let's um, let's go read a few verses here. Uh, Joshua chapter one. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, uh, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. As I said to Moses, um, as I said to Moses, sorry, from the wilderness and the Lebanon, uh, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Um, and then he says, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Okay, so the, this great reassurance, you know, with, with all the instructions, uh, this great reassurance. Uh, if you notice verse two, uh, he he just brings it. Uh, I mean, he's just stating um, what is the reality. He's bringing home the reality, uh, or you know, if there was anything in Joshua's mind. Um, Thinking, okay, uh, I wish things could be better, or I wish things could go back to how they were. And the Lord is right, you know, just is bringing him, uh, you know, the reality and, and presenting with the facts, saying, Joshua, you know, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. And there's work to be done. Uh, there's, there's end of a chapter, the beginning of another one, and it involves you. There's work to be done. So now, arise. Now, therefore, arise and go. Right, and I'm, I have I work with you and work. Uh, I want to work through you. So, it says no man shall be able to withstand as I was with Moses. So I will be with you also. Right, and it says I will not leave you nor forsake you. And then verse six: Be be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. And verse 8, you know, we know this instruction. This book of law shall not depart from your mouth, and you shall meditate in it day and night. And you shall observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Uh, now here comes the, you know, it's, it's reiterating that it's a command. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go. Okay, so you see um, the whole thing happening, and uh, uh, it's... Uh, Probably uh, and typically it's a uh, time of transition. You know, and it's a it's a change of uh, it's a change of leadership. It's a change of uh, you know everything. The scenario now, uh, the land to which they have been jo journeying to, you know, is is right in front of them. They're going to cross over to the Jordan, um, cross over, and then um, and then go and take the territory. Now, uh, so. Uh, we, we see that the Lord saying, you know, as I was with Moses, so I will be also. In this transition, the Lord is uh, giving or presenting Joshua with certain things that are not going to change, right? So certain things that are going to be constants, and and that's uh, and and that's something that uh, that we need to. You know, uh, uh, we need to receive and say, okay. 
as I go through this change uh, or as I enter into this season of transition where it seems like uh, there's a lot of change everywhere, there's one thing or someone who does not change at all and he is with me, right? So the Lord is saying, you know, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you also. And then he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. No, uh, and very reassuring words we hear, especially um, when you're when you're looking behind and when you're looking ahead, and you're saying, "Okay, this is a great task, this is an intimidating task, and uh, so many changes happening." Uh, and then to to encounter the voice of God uh, and to receive this message from God that here is something that is a constant. Right. And and for us today, you know, also, I don't know if we're going through transitions or not, but for us today, uh, we we um, you know we have this reassurance that uh, that the Lord is the same when when things are changing, when things accelerating, maybe or slowing down, whatever you know the season is, the Lord is the same, and He says, "As I was, so I will be right, with you in this season. I will never leave. I will never forsake." And uh, and that's fantastic, right? To have God say that, and to 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 really reach out and you know have faith and put our trust in Him. Okay, so so the thing is this: when it comes to transition in uh, leadership, right? Um, this is one scenario, but then there could be other uh, other scenarios where the transition is unexpected. You know, here it's there's been a kind of preparation in the sense. Um, you know, jo uh, Joshua. Uh, if you if you read Deuteronomy, you see that uh, you know uh, he's been prayed over, he's laid hands, and and we see that uh, you know uh, Joshua. Uh, sorry, uh, Deuteronomy 34 and verse 9. We see Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom. For for Moses laid his hands and did as the Lord commanded. So right in front of the people, he has actually kind of you know, done kind of a. Uh, ordination, right? Laid his hands, prayed on him, and it says that he was uh, full of uh, the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid hands on him and prayed, and so the children of Israel heeded and uh, did as the Lord had commanded Moses. And so, um, so all this had happened, but still, I'm sure that this would be uh, when it actually happened. When Moses was not there on the scene, it would have taken. Joshua by surprise, right? So, um, to make them. So, also, you know, transitions in leadership, maybe it's a church, maybe it's a ministry, sometimes it just takes you by surprise. Right? It's unexpected, it's not planned. And some trans transitions are planned, and, um, and even then, you know, we, there is this element of, uh, you know, that change and maybe discomfort uh, and so on. And I, I remember uh, this was uh, a year ago when, when you know, when we had um, the, the pandemic and the, you know, the Delta variant, a lot of lives were being lost, and uh, especially in ministry because pastors were there at the for, you know forefront of things, um, you know, uh, meeting people and uh, you know, conducting funerals and so on. And so, um, so there was this this pastor who passed away, you know, uh, is. is I mean, he was, he was not very old, uh, but still, you know, uh, he was quite healthy, but then he succumbed to COVID. And and so the family was just grasping, you know, we could, uh, you know, going through various, uh, uh, various emotions, you know, who will do this, who will do that, and uh, because it was kind of unexpected. So uh, when, a, when a transition is unexpected, you know, it can be very, very challenging. And also, if a transition is... Uh, unpleasant, you know. Um, like for example, if if uh, a leader or a, the leadership change has to had to be brought about um, because maybe of some moral failure or you know as some disciplinary act or some kind kind of a rehabilitation for the leader, so it had to be you know brought in. Right, so there also uh, things may not be very uh, pleasant, right? So, so here are some practical things 
Okay, so this actually, uh, this section was, uh, most of it was put together by Pastor Ashish. And uh, it was also in one of our conference that we, um, that we, you know, we studied this. So a lot uh, has come from a personal experience. And so it's, it's really, you know, very practical and uh, a lot of wisdom here, right? So the first thing to do is to keep our eyes on the Lord. Keep our focus on the Lord you know, during these times of transition. Um, why? The reason is simple, because uh, well, He knows all. He's greater than the storms, um, than the you know, the disturbances, the turbulence that's happening around. Um, he's greater than that. Okay? He knows all. He's greater than that. He's infinitely powerful, um, and He's also promised that uh, you know He's He's going to be the same. Right, his power is not diminished in any way. This character has not changed in any way. Um, so he's always reaching out, always available. Right. So, uh, so the best thing that we can do is to keep our focus on the Lord, even though it can be very, very tempting to react um, to the situation. Right. To to look at situation and then you know to react to it. Right, but um, the first thing, the primary thing, is to keep uh, focus on the Lord. You know, Psalm ninety-three, verse three and four: The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, than the waves of the sea. Right? The Lord on high is mightier, is bigger than the waves, than the noise of many waters for us to understand and say yes god uh, yeah it's very tempting it's uh, it seems very intimidating but i'm going to keep my focus on you i'm going to keep my eyes on you right so so keeping our, so how do we practically do it which means that uh, it's time to really dig in uh, dig in, in in the sense you know dig your heels in into the ground and say uh, i'm going to you know follow him closely now you know uh, yes motions can be uh, you know, churning, uh, but I'm going to look to the Lord. I'm going to, you know, hear uh, what the Lord is saying. I'm, I'm not going to turn to the left or to the right. I'm going to make sure that I, I am in the Word, right? And I'm not doing things uh, in the flesh, but uh, or you know, carnally just, you know, responding to things. But I'm going to be uh, in the Word of God. I'm going to be led. By the Spirit of God, I'm going to be even more careful um, right now, right? So uh, that's a valuable thing. That's a, that's the right thing to do. Okay. Um, so there there'll be many um, demands to make decisions, right? Um, demands to make some decisions, make some changes, make some decisions about the process. Who's going to take care of that now? You know, this area of ministry, maybe this person was there and this person is not there. And, uh, you know, and um, uh, so, you know, who's going to take care of it and uh, how and what about, you know, what about the reactions of people? What about the resp responses of people? You know, uh, so decisions, you know, are you going to meet? Are you going to meet with them? Are you going to meet with the leaders? Are you going to? So all those things would be there. So, um, so all those decisions. So when it comes to decisions, you know, make those decisions out of a pure and sincere heart, right? Uh, so let it not be uh, you know, vindictive. Let it not be, um, you know, in any way out of uh, out of bitterness or out of uh, hatred, whatever, you know. Uh, let it be pure, let it be sincere, and let it be for the overall good of the of the ministry or of the organization or, or of the team, right? So, so it's not that I'm protecting myself or you know, uh, uh, etc. Or you know, I will be benefited as a leader um, or any other reason like that. So, so the decision is out of a pure, out of the pure. Okay, so we are, we're looking at difficult transitions here. Right, so we're not looking at planned transitions. We just, you know, just focusing on some. Let's say if it's a difficult, challenging transition. Okay, the third thing is to uh, guard our hearts. Okay, 
uh, because there are times when when we can allow fear to take over okay we are we are just overwhelmed by fear then we will act out of fear best of our decisions are tainted by fear right uh, oh what will that person say what will this person say what will what will happen and uh, you know how and and everything is uh, everything is influenced by fear right so don't let fear enter your heart uh, well it's it's well it's uh, it's easy to say this and difficult it's a difficult task we know thing is don't be overwhelmed you know it's 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 okay to fear i mean it's okay to uh, feel the emotion of fear right we are we are designed like that and i'm sure that there will be those emotions rising but um, turn back to the lord uh, be um, you know fully immersed in his love right and uh, we see that uh, his perfect love you know casts out all kinds of fear right of course the context is different uh, for that verse but uh, this is what happens when we when we know that he loves when you know that he's there when you know that is he's not going to leave you um when we know that we are loved in that situation that casts out fear that puts a you know no entry sign on the on the so um the other thing is to guard our heart from maybe some hurts or bitterness right because during a difficult transition it is possible there could be all kinds of communication right uh, we're receiving all kinds of messages uh, maybe from people who are leaving maybe from people who have left maybe from people who are staying like we know that ministry is you know with people involving people and you know all kinds of uh, perceptions and so on so um so there's cause that for us to get hurt right and especially when when you hear some things from from the best of people right whom you walked with for many years so there is call uh, you know, there is opportunity uh, or there might be a chance that you get hurt or get bitter right so if it's an insult or you know and uh, you know something that is said you know without being uh, without uh, you know that is not thought thought through and uh, so we might um, get offended there is every opportunity to get offended so so do so guard your heart again okay out of our heart flows the issues of life so um, guard our heart uh, because when we get hardened um, at this you know in, in these moments uh, when we when we really want to hear from god so, but when we get hard when we get bitter we are actually closing out that option or we are you know we are blocking literally or you know we are uh, just trying to uh, we are putting a lot of filters there right which we do not want so you know, don't let hurt or bitterness um, uh, would overtake you uh, then the other other thing third thing is uh, you know the temptation to be judgmental judgmental condemning um, and to criticize you know so you know it, it's the and i think this is uh, one such you know this is uh, something which uh which we need to you know really uh, watch out for because uh, um the people want to know and then you want to you know you want to justify right and you want to um uh, condemn all the mistakes that people have done and you want to you know you know um, state all communicate all that and sometimes publicly right so don't be tempted to that don't be tempted to be judgmental don't be tempted to condemn be tempted to you know um criticize right uh, avoid that temptation okay um the other thing ha which happens is that um, well see you're in a, sometimes you know during this this kind of a difficult transition you're in a place where you're not at the liberty to explain to each and every one right you don't want to bring out the negative things that have happened um well uh, in the other person right you you want to guard that person as well you know you don't want to just you know inflict damage and hurt um uh, you know inflict any more damage and hurt right uh, 
well, you, you might have corrected the person and tried corrected the leader in private, and you don't want to bring down, uh, you know, and you've done it in an honorable manner, and you want to leave it at that. But then there is this temptation, right? Um, uh, people are saying, hey, actually, you know, actually, this should have been done. Uh, it's, you know, it was too harsh. Maybe that person should have been given another chance and so on, right? Uh, without knowing the fact that maybe there are a hundred other chances you were given, right? And and as a leader, you are corrected in private, maybe hundred times, maybe two hundred times. And um, so the thing is to, um, you know, you might be seen as someone who was was done wrong, that you're the person who's done wrong, and you're not at liberty to explain to each and every person, uh, okay, this this is what happened, this is what I did, this is what happened. You're not at liberty to do that, right? So the thing is to let it go and be willing to be perceived okay you can't ch change perceptions over time well it will it will come to light it will come to light and the lord will settle that but uh, maybe right now you're not in a place to uh, you know do that so let it go right? and this is again a, a difficult thing right um because when we look at uh, um the lord jesus the kind of example that he uh, that he left for us um you know first peter 2 21 says for to this you were called because christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that you should follow his steps who committed no sin nor was deceit found in his mouth who when he was reviled did not revile in return when he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously. Okay. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously. You know, there are there are times when all we can do is commit ourselves. To the one who judges righteously commit the situation the circumstance to one who judges righteously and say lord i'm i cannot really you know communicate or bring all this out and uh, you are the vindicator you're the one who judges righteously so therefore you know i'm going to let this be okay um so excuse me so there are times when one has to do that right and take the uh, take that path right uh, or take that high ground right instead of uh, um, you know throwing mud on each and every uh, you know person uh, who is uh, you know who's bringing an accusation uh, so instead of doing that we might have to take the high ground right and when we see that the lord has left us an example to do so 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 the the vindication right bringing out the vindication uh, well it might it might happen immediately it might not happen immediately uh, maybe it, it might take some time uh, for that to happen but leave that to god can we trust god to bring about can we trust god who um, you know who who knows all who's seen all who knows our heart right our motives our heart he knows inside out so can we trust him to vindicate us right? can we trust him to do that in romans 12 17 repay no one evil for evil having regard for good things in the sight of all men if it is possible as much as depends on you live peaceably with all men beloved do not avenge yourselves but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in doing so, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Okay, so uh, leave the vindication, uh, you know, say, setting everything right, and uh, you know, maybe bringing that that uh, whoever's done wrong bringing that person to task you know leave that to god okay um okay the next one 
is to stay focused on what's ahead. Okay. What are the goals? What is the objective? And uh, what is the vision? Now, this is this is going to take a lot out of us, right? Uh, we really have to lean into God. We really have to draw strength uh, from the inner man, draw strength from from Him, from from the Holy Spirit who dwells within, right? Um, and uh, you know, and we see the instruction: be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Uh, when well, it talks about supernatural, you know, ability, <clears throat> being strong in the Lord and in the power of His mouth. Okay. Um, so it talks about supernatural ability to be strong in that, to be mighty in that. Uh, so the thing is to uh, to really tap in, right? Uh, to reach in, to reach out to God, to reach in, and to stay focused. Right? Uh, it's uh, uh, you know I, I, I think of so many you know scenarios where I've seen this happen where uh, you know where uh, you know strong leaders right uh, just continuing on staying focused and uh, on the journey that's ahead okay what needs to be done now right and not really crumbling down and uh, really inspirational to see that strength. Right. Um, and and to see the focus and to see that okay, God, you know, all this is you know, this is a transition, so I'm not going to make this uh, the big picture. The big picture is something else. Well, this is happening. <clears throat> it's a season of life that's happening, but we're looking beyond at what you're pointing to and what you've called us to do. Right? We're looking beyond that, and uh, we're going ahead. We're journeying ahead. <clears throat> Despite everything that's happening, it's it's amazing what uh, what God's power and what God's ability can in, enable us to do. Right? We, we you know we um, it's another facet of God's power. You know we we think of God's power as okay healing and deliverance and signs and wonders and miracles and, and transformative um, you know transformation in character and. Yeah, this is another aspect, you know, uh, of God's power where we can really be overcomers. Where we can live a life of uh, or, or journey through life with, with that, you know, intense focus uh, on His vision, on what God has called us to do. Okay, um, and I think the the early disciples walked in it, and we when we look through church history, we see some of them. Uh, despite many setbacks, coming back to that place of saying, "God, what next? Let's let's move on. You know, I'm ready." And 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 and, and when you see uh, Joshua chapter one, we see the same thing. Like God saying, "Okay, uh, now arise and go. Therefore, right, cross over the Jordan to this land that I'm giving you. Arise and go. Therefore, so." Uh, stay focused on the journey that's ahead. It's also a time to keep the core team or the team of leaders together. Okay. Now, here with the leaders, you're at liberty to explain the details, the good, bad, and the ugly. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, you know, you're to explain to them uh, clearly. Okay, this is the situation. Let them see. Uh, where you stand, let them see, um, uh, you know, maybe there are mistakes that you have made and let them see that, you know, be transparent, be open and uh, keep the, you know, the team together, the co-leaders together, because they are, they will actually, they are pillars, they are, they carry the weight of responsibility of, uh, of the task, of the ministry, um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm talking about different scenarios of the church, uh, of the assignment of the organization. So, right. So, keep that team together, uh, and uh, and they will, in turn, you know, they will be the strength that you require, uh, and also, they will also communicate, right, uh, and explain to others, right. Um, so. Keep the core team together. Um, keep the core team 
uh, engaged, um, be transparent, be open with the core team. Um, so this is this is crucial. Right? This is very very important. Okay, convey a singular message, meaning. Okay, now this is not a PR exercise to maintain, to you know, to manage, to uh, you know, to cover up. No. Uh, well, there's no deviation from the truth, right? Do not lose your you know, sense of integrity and moral compass, right? So stay focused, stay, you know, don't deviate from the truth. Um, and um, yeah, so be consistent in being truthful and conveying the truthful you know, message. That's what it is, right? So when you say convey a singular message, it does not mean that you're deviating from the truth. It's not a PR exercise to manage to put out a fire, um, you know, and uh, to maintain a reputation even, no. Uh, but what you're communicating, there's nothing contradictory. It's clear, it's, it's not confusing, uh, and, uh, you know, we are communicating something, which is, uh, which is the truth. Okay. Um, okay, here are some more things and we'll just quickly go through this. Appoint the right people to lead or else step in yourself. You know, uh, now, now, for a season, now, when if there is a gap in leadership, if there is a gap in certain areas, now um, either we can appoint, uh, we can delegate. And but if that is not possible, if that, uh, you know, the, the right person is not there, then you know, then you as a leader would need to step in and do it because it, it's not something that we it can you know um, uh, it's not that probably that that area of uh, function or that area of ministry it's not something that can go on autopilot right so it, it requires work it requires uh, you know effort and oversight so um, either you you can you appoint and you see if there are people who can really take that carry that additionally or uh, one has to step in right and do that and maybe uh, it is an additional load it would be an additional load and uh, it will be there for a season right but uh, uh, but that is something that needs to be done okay okay address and answer questions privately and sufficiently okay so well people ask some questions and maybe that needs to be done maybe there are there are uh, there are they are in leaders uh, no. So answer the questions privately and sufficiently. Wait, things settle down before introducing new things, right? So now this is not the time to say, okay, now hey, this is something that new that we are going to do, or you know, this is something that we are opening up uh, a new branch or a new you know uh, area of ministry. Now this is not the time. This is time for things to settle down before uh, introducing. So so don't don't do that. Uh, Lastly, commit your reputation into God's hands, right? Yeah, uh, well, the Lord knows our hearts, right? The Lord knows our motives. So it's important that whatever decisions that we're taking, uh, it comes from a pure and sincere heart. That's why, you know, we looked at that earlier, right? So um, whatever, you know, guarding our heart and making decisions, it has to come from a pure, and, and a sincere heart. So there's no compromise on that, right? So, so we know that our reputation or how people perceive us, right? Um, well, if it's if it's if it's uh, if it's not good, don't worry about it. Right? Commit that into God's hands because you know for sure that you know you've done the right thing. And you know for sure that uh, you know you you've done or you made you've taken decisions out of a pure and a sincere heart. So leave that, leave the reputation into God's hands. Now Psalm twenty-one, sorry, seventy-one and verse twenty-one says, "You shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side." Right? So God's word. This is what God God does best. So you know, leave that into His hands. Right. Okay, so so this is um, I know it's it's um, you know when we look through this, this is uh, 
since it is a challenging transition, you know, um, you know, it was probably we, we, we just dwelt on the negatives, right? Uh, negatives a lot, you know, don't do this, don't do this and do this. Uh, you know, but transitions can be very pleasant as well. Okay, and we're not going into that, but transitions, planned transitions can be uh, very honorable and pleasant uh, as well, where, uh, you know, um, uh, so there will be kind of mixed feelings, but it can be, you know, it can be a pleasant and honorable and, and uh, you know, uh, a transition, right? So, um, so, um, yeah, so, so that is something for us to, you know, uh, plan and and do that um, in a prayerful manner. Okay. okay so we'll uh, we'll stop here and then take a break before we I, I don't uh, go over to personal productivity, which is a different uh, you know thing by itself. But I just wanted to know: are there any questions? Anything that you want to share uh, on transition? Maybe your thing that you've experienced. Uh, maybe a good transition. Maybe a bad transition. You know, we can we can talk about that. Anything that you would you'd like to share? Uh, maybe some observations, something that you experienced. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, say thank. Thank you, Pastor. So, uh, one experience that comes to mind uh, was um, in 2016. I was actually part of the, the team of my predecessor, who was the president of the young adults group. Um, now, before he left, I, we had lots of issues. At the same time, we had um, a great time, you know, fellowshipping, but it's like we had more negatives compared to the positives. And then now taking over, I kind of inherited all the things, you know, the complaints, People were not really connecting in the group. We had people divided and all that. And so inheriting all that, when I was going to now be president, right, um, there was this tendency to kind of wash off everything that he had done, the good things, and just kind of uh, put the blame on him. Oh, it's because of him that this is happening. It's because of him, this is why uh, we are here as a group, you know. But I didn't do that because I think I really considered it that why don't we just um, encourage more of what we've been doing right and then fix what the problem is with all the leaders, you know, get feedbacks from uh, everyone to lay their complaints because that was one thing we didn't have in the previous leadership was that there were enough okay. healthy feedbacks coming from um, the people. So we didn't know exactly what the issues were. So we got all those feedbacks, mm. we prayed, and you know, we were able to transit from that season to a new season that opened up many, and brought up many people into the group and all that. So my encouragement basically is that sometimes you might inherit something that, oh, there were so much issues and all that. Look for the good things that happened and then prayerfully find a strategy, right, to, you know, transit from that um, level to where God wants you to take the group to, or whatever God has called us to lead. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Wonderful. Thank you. It was, uh, yeah, it was good wisdom in that, and yeah, very encouraging. Thank you so much. Yeah, Chris, uh, go ahead, Chris. Uh, yes, Pastor. So um, yeah. I think uh, one thing I wanted to just just point out, um, and you may have uh, you know referred to it uh, in your discussion around transition, is that um, uh, this may actually occur more in a, in a kind of a corporate environment, but I guess it also could apply in, in ministry also. Yeah. Where during a transition there are uh, there are people um, maybe among the leadership team or even among uh, you know, uh, the, the sort of the second rung, the third rung in, in, in leadership, mm -hmm. who who may want to who may want to leave, you know, the corporate at, at their environment, um, and uh, you know, go to an go to another, uh, you know, go to another ministry or go to another company. 
primarily because um, they may maybe either issues around um, you know the the transition the, the person who is <clears throat> may have may have left the organization the, the leader for example or uh, it could be um, because um, you know they're not just not happy with uh, you know the the, the, the change the, the new setup and the change right so i think that has to be managed and mm -hmm. um, i still remember i mean i'm talking about in a corporate environment where uh, one of I think my uh, in the in the in the line of business that I worked in, uh, the person who was most uh, most senior actually, uh, uh, sorry, not 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 from my line of business, but from another line of business actually, uh, he left the organization, but he was a very uh, very uh, very uh, senior, and uh, immediately I know I you know one of the observations we, uh, you know a lot of people had was that some of the other lines of business. Uh, the people who had um, uh, had not been promoted for some time, they actually got promoted, and uh, you know that that was one way of the the way the corporate uh, the corporate environment it got managed, and then um, in, a, in another sort of situation where my uh, the person I used to report into uh, that person left uh, for for some for some personal reasons, and um, therefore um, you know the person who took o took over. Uh, I still remember, you know, he, uh, you know, spoke to us as a team and, you know, and told us that, you know, um, uh, you know, he tried to manage this situation where, you know, he didn't want other people to leave the organization. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, this, this was sort of like, you know, um, managed in a sense. Mm -hmm. So I just thought I'd just point that out here. Right, right. Yeah, so th that's inevitable in the sense uh, there could be some fallout there could be um, you know for whatever reason I mean the, the uh, definitely you know uh, that's the I mean that's the right time to have uh, you know important conversations with uh, you know uh, with the leaders with the with those who are giving oversight to certain you know, different ministries and and have more of that you know you you cannot over communicate you know during these times just to find out what's on people's heart and yeah and and also you know answer their questions etc uh yeah so i remember once when um like uh, there was many years back in the you know the worship ministry there was you know that kind of a change that was happening and uh, uh, so i remember meeting with uh, you know every every person in the team uh, at that time uh, it was a you know it was a difficult task in the sense to meet and then go over the whole thing over and again uh, uh, and then you know whatever questions they had it was it was sensitive so we couldn't do it as a group so i had to do it individually but uh, to answer you know whatever questions they might have whatever you know, fears there that they might have to to answer that and and also to talk about okay this is what is the way ahead so uh, yeah so communication at that point is uh, very very important and and they even you know there will be you know beyond over and uh, beyond that um, there could be certain you know decisions being made saying okay i yeah, I hear you, but then still, I'd I'd like to go ahead with my decision, or you know, then just leave it to the individual, you know, and uh, yeah, so people might want to stay, might want to go, uh, but I think we just need to bless them and go. Yeah. Okay, we'll we'll stop here, and then we'll come back at eleven o five. Right, ten more minutes. Uh, ten minutes break. Thank you so much.